A ball P of mass 2m is attached to one end of a string, so the weight is then 2mg. And then on the other end of the string is attached ball Q. The mass of that is 5m, so weight is 5mg. And then we're told that the string passes over a fixed pulley. It's held at rest to begin with. The balls are hanging freely, the string is taut. We're told the string is vertical. We're given the distances above the ground as well, which are on the diagram. The system is released from rest and then Q hits the floor, and then P will continue to move upwards and it does not strike the pulley. And then we're given our modeling assumptions as well. The balls are modeled as particles. The string is light and inextensible. The pulley is small and smooth, and the and air resistance is negligible. And then using the model, we want to find out the equations of motion for P and Q. So let's draw on our tension onto this diagram. So T is this way, T is this way. And we know that Q is the heavier mass, so that would mean that the acceleration of Q is downwards and the acceleration of P is upwards. So for part A, we want to write out our equations of motion. So let's start with Q. So Q accelerates downwards, therefore the resultant force is downwards. That overall downwards force will be 5mg minus T. And that will be equal to ma, mass of Q times A. Let's call that equation 1. And then for P, the resultant force is upwards in the same direction as acceleration. And so that will be T minus 2mg, which will be equal to mass, P's mass, multiplied by acceleration. And that's our first four marks. So for part B, it says, find in terms of H, the height above the ground at which P first comes to instantaneous rest. Let's break this up into different stages. So stage one is when Q travels a distance of H down towards the ground and then hits it. And then in that time, P will travel upwards a distance of H as well. So that's our first stage. And then our second stage would be, now that Q has hit the ground, P still has some velocity, it has momentum. It will then move upwards, let's say a distance of X, until eventually the speed is zero. And we're trying to work out what is the height above the ground of P when it first comes to rest? So we're trying to work out what is 2H plus H plus X. We want our answer to be in terms of H. That's what it says in the question. Give it in terms of H. So then we want to work out what X is equal to. So to do that, we have to work out our acceleration. Let's do that from the equations of motion that we have here. So we can add the two things up. If we add the two equations, the minus t and the t cancel, the 5mg and the minus 2mg give us 3mg, and that's equal to 7ma. m's cancel, and we're left with the acceleration is equal to 3g divided by 7. Okay, so for stage one, let's write out all that we know, all of our SUVAC quantities. So we know that the distance traveled is going to be h, so I'm looking at P here. P travels a distance of H upwards. The initial speed is zero. As we're told in the question, the system is released from rest. The final speed, we don't know. And the final speed of stage one will be the initial speed for stage two. So we want to work out what that speed will be. The acceleration is 3G over seven. And the time, we don't know, and we're not interested in time. We just want to work out distance. We shouldn't need time for that. So then, from this equation, we can work out what V is. We can use the equation V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. That's the SUVA equation that relates these four quantities. U is 0, so V squared is then 2AS. So V is then the square root of 2 times A times S which is the same thing as 6GH all over 7. Okay, so now on to stage 2. So remember that for this stage, the ball Q has hit the ground. The string then goes slack. So because Q is no longer pulling on the string, there's no more tension in the string, but P still has some velocity. Whatever speed that Q hit the ground at, is the speed that P has, 
and that will be the speed for stage two, the initial speed for stage two. We're trying to work out the distance that P will then travel until it comes to rest, so the final speed for this stage would be zero. Okay, so let's write down some of that stuff. So we know that the displacement would be, let's call it X, that's what I've written down on the diagram, displacement is X. The initial speed will be the final speed for stage two, so that was the root 6GH over 7. It will eventually come to rest, so V is 0. And the acceleration has changed as well. So before, when there was tension in the system, when, this, when P was being pulled up by the string, these were our equations of motion, and then we ended up with acceleration being 3G over 7. But now, because there is no longer any tension, the only force that P experiences is its weight, and when an object only experiences its weight and no other forces, the acceleration will just be g. So I'm considering the upwards direction in this case to be positive, and that's why I have my initial velocity being positive as well. P is moving upwards. If upwards is positive, velocity is positive. The acceleration acts downwards, so therefore it will be minus g. And again, t, we don't want to work out. We're not interested in that. So using these four quantities, the same equation, b squared is equal to u squared plus 2as, we can use this to work out what, well, eventually, what x is. Let's put everything in. So we end up with 0 is equal to u squared. u squared is this squared, so that just gets rid of the square root. 6gh all over 7 plus 2as, so it'd be 2 x times minus g. Okay, so this is the same thing as 6gh over 7 minus 2xg is equal to 0. I'll bring the 2xg to the other side. I can cancel out the g's and I can divide by 2. So x then becomes, so divide this by 2, the 2 goes to the bottom. 6h over 14 and that's the same thing as 3h over 7. So let's put that on our diagram. So the purple distance, that's the distance for stage 3, that will be 3h over 7. And the question is asking us to find the height above the ground at which p first comes to instantaneous rest. So let's look at the diagram again. It's 2h plus h plus 3h over 7. That will be our answer. So 2h plus h plus 3h over 7, and that will be 24h over 7. So that will be our answer to part b. OK, part c. State one limitation of modeling the balls as particles that could affect your answer to part b. So if we're modeling the balls as particles, we're not considering their dimensions. So if the height above the ground in reality, we're considering to be from the center of mass of object Q all the way to the ground. Well, that would mean that object Q does not actually fall a full distance of H. It falls a full distance of whatever this is, whatever H is minus the radius of the ball. That would be the radius. H will be the radius of the ball plus the actual height the bottom of the ball is from the ground. So basically, in reality, the distance that Q falls to the ground wouldn't be exactly H. So that could be what we write down for part C. And then for part D, it says, in reality, the string will not be inextensible. State how this will affect the acceleration of the particles. So then, if the strings are not inextensible, that means they can stretch. So what that would mean is, if Q were to move down, then what may happen is the string will stretch, or the string could stretch, and then P would not move the exact same distance up that Q moves down. So if you imagine a scenario where you pull Q down quite quickly, and this is like a piece of rubber that we have going over this pulley, then what would happen is the rubber band will stretch that we have, and it will take a split second before P catches up in its motion to what Q is doing. So we move Q down by like a centimeter very quickly, and then it might take a split second before P moves up by that same distance. So if P and Q have different motions, they wouldn't therefore have the same acceleration. 
So that could be what we write down for part D.